Welcome, friends, to another uplifting moment. It's so great to connect with you once again. Today, God has sent me with a very important message. It's something He has placed in my heart, and God wants us to know that right now, we are unfortunately on the front lines of a supernatural battle where the forces of light clash with the darkness. This is not merely a skirmish, but a supernatural war of epic proportions. A war between good and evil, between Christ and Antichrist. And make no mistake, this is a fight to the finish. But fear not, for we do not wage this war in our own strength, but in the mighty power of God, as the Apostle Paul boldly proclaims, put on the full armor of God. This is not a mere suggestion. It's a command for your own protection and empowerment. We are called to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Why the armor? Because we are up against more than mere mortal foes. Our struggle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So, lay down your earthly weapons that fail you and take up the divine armor that ensures victory. Let us stand firm, not in our own strength, but in the impenetrable armor of God. For in doing so, we are equipped to withstand every assault of the enemy and emerge victorious in the evil day. And I want you to know that you can win this war, but you have to know the tactics the evil one uses to achieve victory. Because as followers of Christ, it's imperative to discern these signs and take swift action against them. In this video, I will unveil these signs and provide you with the tools you need to win this spiritual warfare. In the sacred verses of Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, Paul unveils a profound truth. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. It's a message echoing through the corridors of time that Christ's purpose in coming to this world was to dismantle the works of the devil. Consider this deeply. You cannot embrace the redemption of the cross without acknowledging its purpose, to vanquish a very real devil whose sole aim is your destruction. The Apostle Paul warns us of this truth, urging us not to forget the existence of our adversary. There exists in the vast expanse of the universe a malevolent force, a force bent on deception, division, and destruction. It's a force that knows no relenting, no respite. But hear this, just as surely as the Bible reveals the reality of God, it unveils the existence of a very real adversary, a devil with demonic hosts, organized, relentless, and wholly committed to your demise. They will attack your mind, and attack your body, and attack your marriage, and before long, they will also attack your finances, and attack your children, and attack your relationships. Yet, let us be clear, your spouse, your boss, even your internal struggles, they are not the ultimate adversaries. No, there is an enemy, a cunning strategist whose aim is to sow discord, jealousy, and unrest. Paul's words resound with urgency. The enemy schemes against you. Why? Because you are God's own, a beacon of light in a world shrouded in darkness. You are the bearer of truth in a realm of lies. You are a soldier of the cross, anointed and empowered by the blood of Jesus Christ. But fear not, for you are not defenseless. Arm yourself with the full armor of God. Wield the sword of truth and stand firm against the onslaught of darkness. For the victory is already won through Christ Jesus. Take hold of your authority, for you are a threat to the enemy's domain. So, my friends, 
let us rise up in the power of the cross, knowing that in Christ we are more than conquerors. The battle may rage on, but the outcome is certain. Victory belongs to our God. And that's why I want you to pay attention for, I am about to reveal five signs that show Satan is attacking you. Number one, unexplained anxiety or fear. Have you ever felt the grip of unexplained anxiety or fear, like a shadow looming over your every step? It's a suffocating weight, a relentless force that clouds your mind and steals your peace. But in these moments, we must anchor ourselves in the timeless wisdom of Psalm 34, verse 4, where it is written, I sought the Lord, and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Fear, my friends, is not of God. It is a weapon wielded by the enemy to chip away at our faith, to sow doubt in our hearts. But we are not defenseless. We have been equipped with the promises of our Almighty God, promises that serve as a shield against the arrows of fear. Whatever fear may be gripping your heart right now, I want you to know that you are not alone. You are not alone. You are cherished, and you are held in the palm of God's hand. His promises are true. His love is unfailing. And you know what? The Bible tells us, fear not a staggering 365 times. That's a fear not for every single day of the year. Fear, my friends, has a profound impact on our lives. It has the power to paralyze us, to bind us in invisible chains, and to hinder the very work of God in our lives. Fear sees obstacles where God sees opportunities. It's a magnet for everything contrary to God's will for our lives. Just as Job declared, the thing that I feared the most has come upon me. Fear has a way of drawing in the very things we dread. But here's the good news. We do not have to live in fear. For when God is near, fear loses its grip on our hearts. And one thing I have noticed is that God always instructed the Chosen One to fear not before working in them and through them. Just as He spoke to Zechariah, Mary, the shepherds, and Joseph, He speaks to us today, Fear not. To you, my brother, my sister, He declares, Fear not, for your prayers have been heard. Fear not, for divine favor rests upon your life. Fear not, for exceeding joy awaits you. And fear not, for what God is birthing in you is greater than any challenge you may face. So, my friends, let us not be tormented by fear. Instead, let us rejoice in the pardon of our past and the power of our present. Let us embrace the truth that the God who is with us is greater than any fear that threatens to consume us. Fear not, for the victory is already ours in Christ Jesus. The second thing you are likely to notice when Satan is attacking you is persistent negative thoughts. Have you ever found yourself entangled in a web of relentless negativity? Thoughts that whisper doubts about your worth, your abilities, or even God's love for you. It's like a storm cloud hovering over your mind, casting shadows of insecurity and doubt. But take heart, my friends, for we are not defenseless against this onslaught. In 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, we are given a powerful strategy. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. This verse serves as a battle cry, a call to arms against the enemy's schemes. We are called to actively combat negative thoughts, to refuse them entry into our hearts and minds. Instead of allowing them to take root and dictate our reality, we must replace them with the truth of God's Word. For every whisper of doubt, there is a promise of God's unfailing love. For every seed of insecurity, there is a declaration of our identity as beloved children of God. Let us not be passive recipients of negative thoughts, 
but active participants in the renewal of our minds. So, when negative thoughts assail you, arm yourself with the truth of Scripture. Take hold of the promises of God, for they are your shield and your strength. Refuse to be captive to negativity. Instead, choose to dwell on whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable as commanded in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. The third sign you may notice when facing spiritual attack is sudden strife in your relationships. Have you ever found yourself caught in the midst of conflicts that seemingly erupt out of nowhere? Arguments that escalate quickly, misunderstandings that linger unresolved? It's as if a storm has descended upon your relationships, leaving chaos and confusion in its wake. But take heed, for this could be a manifestation of spiritual warfare. The enemy takes pleasure in sowing discord among God's people, seeking to divide and conquer. Whether it's within marriages, families, friendships, or even within the body of Christ, Satan relentlessly targets vital relationships, aiming to tear apart the very fabric of our communities. However, we are called to stand firm in love and unity, refusing to be ensnared by the enemy's schemes. Romans chapter 12, verse 18 offers us a guiding principle in times of relational turmoil. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. This admonition reminds us of our responsibility to pursue reconciliation and peace in our relationships even in the face of adversity. So, my friends, when strife rears its head in your relationships, do not succumb to despair. Instead, let love be your guiding light, leading you to seek reconciliation and restoration. Remember, you are not alone in this battle. The same God who commands us to live at peace with everyone is the God who empowers us to do so. Draw strength from His promises, take courage in His presence, and know that He is working all things together for your good. Trust in His unfailing love, and let it overflow into every relationship you encounter. For in love and unity, we find the power to overcome every scheme of the enemy and emerge victorious in Christ. Another sign of spiritual attack is the feeling of physical and emotional exhaustion. Have you ever found yourself constantly drained, as if you're running on empty? Spiritual attacks can take a toll not only on our spiritual well-being, but also on our physical and emotional health. You see, my brothers and sisters in Christ, when the devil sets his sights on capturing a soul, his first tactic is to erect a barrier between that soul and God. He understands that by severing the connection with God, he understands that by severing the connection with God, he gains easier access to manipulate and deceive. Thus, when you find yourself growing weary of spiritual disciplines like prayer, evangelism, or fasting, it's a potent sign that the devil is closing in on your spiritual vitality. This lethargy is no coincidence. It's a carefully crafted scheme designed to diminish your zeal for God. The devil knows that if your passion for God continues to flourish, you pose a significant threat to his dominion. Therefore, he seeks to dampen your enthusiasm, to extinguish the fire of your faith, and to lure you away from the path of righteousness. But take heart, for you are not defenseless in this spiritual battle. Watchfulness and prayer become your allies, guarding against any lapses in your relationship with God. Refuse to be swayed by distractions or weariness. Instead, cling to your eternal purpose with unwavering determination. The devil may hurl his arrows of doubt and complacency, but you have been equipped with the shield of faith. Stand firm in the promises of God, knowing that greater is he who is in you. 
than he who is in the world. By remaining steadfast in your devotion to God, you thwart the devil's schemes and walk victoriously in the light of his truth. Just as Jesus withdrew to pray and recharge in Matthew 14, 23, we too must prioritize our spiritual health. It's essential to recognize when we are in need of rest and renewal. Take time to retreat into God's presence to seek solace and strength in His embrace. Allow yourself the grace to rest, both physically and emotionally. Release the burdens you carry into the hands of the one who promises to give you rest. Let go of the pressures and demands of life and find refuge in the arms of your loving Heavenly Father. The fifth and final sign that we'll discuss today is the overwhelming sense of confusion and helplessness. When under attack, even the most spirit-filled individual may find themselves grappling with uncertainty and doubt. Normally, a spirit-filled person is alert and guided by a clear sense of direction as they remain in tune with God's leading. But when the enemy launches his assault, fear, anxiety, and confusion grip the spiritual man, robbing him of divine guidance and leaving him feeling isolated. In moments of difficulty, the spiritual man instinctively turns to God for guidance and wisdom. However, under the weight of the enemy's onslaught, he may struggle to discern God's voice amidst the chaos. The devil cunningly plants seeds of doubt, convincing him that he is alone and abandoned by God. This sense of helplessness becomes his reality, overshadowing his trust in God's faithfulness. But take heart, for this is not your fate. You are not alone in this battle. The enemy's whispers of fear and anxiety are but lies meant to deceive and discourage you. Remember the promise of Psalm 121, verses 7 and 8. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. This assurance reminds us that God is ever present watching over us with unwavering love and protection. Therefore, do not yield to fear and anxiety, for they are tools of the enemy to rob you of your blessings and breakthroughs. Instead, stand firm in your faith, knowing that God is with you at all times, guiding you through every trial and tribulation. So, my friend, do not be dismayed by feelings of helplessness. Trust in the Lord's promises, lean not on your own understanding, and let His peace reign in your heart. In His presence, there is strength, hope, and victory over every spiritual attack. And there you have it, my friends. If you have noticed these signs in your life, do not fear, for victory is already guaranteed. God has given us authority to overcome every attack of the enemy. Take hold of the Word, the blood of the cross, and the authority of Jesus' name, and drive every demonic force back into the depths of hell, for the victory is ours through Christ the Lord. In Ephesians 6, the Apostle Paul equips us with the armor of God, powerful weapons to stand against the schemes of the enemy. He instructs us to gird our loins with truth, wear the breastplate of righteousness, and have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We wield the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And above all, we are to pray without ceasing. For prayer is our lifeline to the abundance of God's provision and protection. Remember, we are soldiers in the army of God, and Jesus is the captain of the hosts. He has given us his name, his word, and his blood, empowering us to overcome every obstacle and triumph over every trial. So, do not underestimate the power that resides within you. Take up your armor, 
wield your weapons and march forward in the confidence of victory. As you go forth from this moment, may you walk in the assurance of God's promises, knowing that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Trust in his unfailing love, rely on his steadfast presence, and stand firm in the victory that is already yours through Christ Jesus. And now, my dear friends, I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer. Let us bow our heads and lift our hearts to the Lord, knowing that He hears our every word and sees our every need. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. We thank you, Lord, for the victory that is already ours through Him who loved us and gave Himself for us. We stand firm in the assurance of your promises, knowing that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment shall be condemned. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that we are engaged in a spiritual battle, and we need your strength and guidance to overcome. We put on the full armor of God, knowing that it is not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit, that we will emerge victorious. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke every scheme of the enemy that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. We command every demonic force to flee from our lives, our families, and our communities. We declare that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Lord, we pray for divine protection over every aspect of our lives. Guard our minds from doubt and fear, our hearts from bitterness and unforgiveness, and our bodies from sickness and disease. Surround us with your hedge of protection and let your angels encamp around us to deliver us from every evil. We lift up those who are facing spiritual attacks, those who feel overwhelmed, confused, and helpless. Strengthen them, Lord, and fill them with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Let your light shine in the darkness, dispelling every shadow of fear and doubt. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer, for it is our greatest weapon in spiritual warfare. As we pray, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Empower us to walk in victory and to live in the abundance of your grace and mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. My dear friends, as we conclude this time of prayer, I want to remind you of the truth that we have proclaimed today. No matter what challenges you may be facing, no matter how fierce the battle may seem, you are not alone. The same God who has called you is faithful, and He will strengthen and protect you through every trial and tribulation. You are a child of the Most High God, chosen and dearly loved. You have been equipped with the armor of God and the authority of Jesus Christ to stand against the powers of of darkness. So, do not be discouraged by the storms of life, for they are but temporary, while the victory we have in Christ is eternal. Hold fast to your faith, my friends, and let it be an anchor for your soul in the midst of life's storms. Trust in the goodness and faithfulness of God, knowing that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. May you go forth from this moment with renewed strength and courage, knowing that God goes before you, fights for you, and makes a way where there seems to be no way. Walk in the confidence of his promises and let your life be a testimony to his unfailing love and grace. Remember, my dear friends, that the battle belongs to the Lord, and He has already secured the victory for you. So lift up your heads, stand firm in your faith, and rejoice, for the Lord your God is with you 
wherever you go. If you believe this with all your heart, type Amen in the comments below, declaring your trust in His power and sovereignty over every situation. And if you have any prayer requests or specific needs that you'd like us to lift up in prayer, please feel free to share them in the comments as well. Remember, you are not alone in your struggles, and we are here to support and encourage one another in faith. Lastly, if you've been blessed by today's message and would like to receive more uplifting content like this, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.